KVGC News Time is now seven minutes after the hour of seven o'clock. Time for a look at the news for a Wednesday, the twenty sixth day of April for two thousand seventeen. In the news today, the California Public Utilities Commission issued two citations totaling eight point three million dollars to Pacific Gas and Electric Company yesterday for several violations related to the Butte fire. The CPUC's investigation found that a pine tree contacted a PG&E 12 kilovolt overhead conductor and started the fire. The CPUC issued an $8 million citation for failing to maintain 12 kilovolt overhead conductors safely and properly. This violation began in January of 2015 when PG&E and or its contractors first failed to identify that the planned removal of two nearby trees would allow the subject pine tree to become hazardous and make contact with the PG&E 12 kilovolt overhead conductor. The second citation was issued for a total of $300,000 for two violations. PG&E was cited for $250,000 for failure to timely report to the CPUC that PG&E's facilities may have been linked to the ignition of the Butte fire. PG&E was also cited $50,000 for failing to maintain the minimum required clearance between the 12 kV conductor and a pine tree. The CPUC requires that a minimum clearance of at least 18 inches be maintained at all times. Now, PG&E has 30 calendar days, that's until May 25th, to pay or contest the citations. On September 9th, back in 2015, you'll recall the Butte fire ignited near Butte Mountain Road here in Amador County, burning 70,868 acres, destroying 921 structures. Of those, 549 were homes, 368 were outbuildings, along with four commercial properties. Also, 44 structures were damaged, and also two civilian fatalities and one injury were the result of the fire. Well, a plea agreement reached in the Jeremiah Barrett case in Calaveras County. Amador County man pled guilty earlier this week to one count of voluntary manslaughter and a special allegation enhancement on the use of a firearm in the death of Wesley Smith. Now, Barrett was facing one felony murder charge in the second degree and three felony manslaughter allegations following his acquittal of the second degree murder and the death of Daniel Haney and Terry Looney Jr. in October of 2015. Presiding Judge Susan Harlan said the plea agreement called for a stipulated sentence of six years in state prison with a 15% conduct and work time credit available. Now, the remaining charges facing Barrett from the October 2015 shooting were dismissed by Harlan in accordance with the plea agreement. Haney, Looney Jr., and Smith were shot and killed at the marijuana farm on Railroad Flat Road that was owned by Barrett's brother, Leon Grammer. Now, Barrett's sentencing is set for 1.30, May 24th. He's been held in Calaveras County Jail. Bail has been set at $3.45 million. And the Amador County Board of Supervisors held lengthy discussions on several items, including a bike route, sanctuary state law, and wild and scenic designations yesterday. The Adventure Cycling Association requested that the board support having part of the cross-country route called USBR 50 come through Amador County. The ACA wanted it to run through some county roads, including the popular Shake Ridge Fiddletown route. Well, after much discussion, including safety concerns and traffic impacts, the board voted 4-1 to one to support an alternate route that uses mostly state highways. Supervisor Richard Forrester voted no. The board also voted to send a letter to the author of SB 54, the so-called Sanctuary State Bill, registering their opposition as written and asking the author to include language that would allow local jurisdictions to inform immigration officials if they have undocumented immigrants in custody on serious or felony crimes. And the board voted 3-2 to two to oppose AB 975, which would change some of the current state wild and scenic law to closer match federal law, including a quarter-mile corridor and wider definitions of the criteria that qualify a river as wild and scenic. Supervisors Morgan and Axe voted no. Well, a Murphy's man suffered major injury after being hit by a car while checking on a deer that he hit Monday morning. Now, the incident happened on Highway 4 west of Hunt Road at about 4 a.m. 
And according to CHP, 63-year-old Robert Hamilton of Murphy's hit a deer on Highway 4, stopped in the westbound lane and got out of his vehicle to look for the deer in case it needed to be removed from the roadway. Now another vehicle came along the scene and stopped to check on the situation. And while Hamilton was standing next to the vehicle talking to the driver, 46-year-old Terrell Butler of Stockton came upon the scene, went to drive around. The second vehicle was blinded by oncoming headlights and hit Hamilton. Hamilton suffered major injury and was taken to Mark Twain Medical Center for treatment. And Sutter Amador Hospital will hold a diabetes information fair this morning. The hospital will host the free fair from 9 to noon. You can get free glucose and lipid screenings. There will be prevention tools, demonstrations, giveaways, and a whole lot more. There will also be experts on hand to answer any questions and to get you help and guidance with diabetes. The hospital is located on Mission Boulevard right here in Jackson. And Mark Twain Medical Center will honor their volunteers this week. The hospital has many volunteers who they'll honor. The one who has given the most, 94-year-old Miriam Trumper, who has given close to 12,000 hours of her time over the years, exact 11,800. Other volunteers to be honored are Joanne Edelmer, who has donated 7,800 hours, Dina Brown with 7,700, and Florence Albert, who has donated 6,700 hours of her time. Now, these volunteers not only donate their hours, many to the hospital. They also spend hours making quilts and crafts for the annual bazaar sale to raise money for the scholarship program. Now the scholarship program is for Calaveras students embarking on a health care profession. Thank you. And that's a look at local news. Go ahead, Judy. Sorry. It would sound a little funny. I got a little lost in the, the last sentence. Uh, but it's uh, basically quilts and hats for the scholarship program for Calaveras students embarking on a career in the health care field. Hey, uh, we just want to thank everybody that showed up last night for J.D.'s birthday party. I left at 3 o'clock. Jack, uh, Jack Scafuzzi was just getting going. He was lighting. What, what was he lighting? I, it, those tiki torch things. But uh, anyway, uh, is it still going on? Have things kind of calmed down a little bit when you left for work this Yeah, morning? but it wasn't the tiki torch lighting. It was the, the hula skirt that he was going around in and when he sat down he had to cross his legs man he, he that skirt that he was he was sporting around but yeah we had a good time in the neighborhood so yeah it was all yeah. good all right that's a look at local news on this gold country wednesday morning from the kvgc news center i'm jd and i'm jim geedy reporting